Hello, I'm Bryony Harris at Quantmines International in Lisbon. I'm joined today by Marcos López de Prado, who is the head of True Positive Technologies and also a senior lecturer at Cornell University. Uh, could you just start by telling us, when using machine learning and AI as finance tools, how does that differ from the traditional methods? Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, the main difference that machine learning brings in is that you can, for the first time, apply non-parametric methods in order to identify complex relationships in higher dimensional data. So what all this means is that you no longer have to be uh, first guessing what is a parametric uh, definition of your model and a specification, and then you are limited that by that specification. Instead, the way machine learnings work is they identify these patterns without being taught about these patterns. They learn the patterns. And that's so fundamentally different from what traditional econometric linear methods do. And as a result, they offer the opportunity um, to uh, uncover um, many relationships in finance that until now were not uh, observable. They were not even guessed. So if it's so good and so effective, why have some machine learning and AI funds failed? Yes. and. Uh, that's uh, the double-edged sword of machine learning. On one hand, you have uh, these powerful techniques that are able to uncover uh, patterns that until now uh, were not observable. On the other hand, these machine learning algorithms will always uncover a pattern, even if it doesn't exist. Uh, they are so powerful that, uh, to some extent, they uh, go beyond what we expected from them. and. The good news is that there are solutions. Uh, there are ways to prevent machine learning al algorithms from overfeeding the data and identifying uh, patterns that are not really going to, hap to, to happen again in the future. Could you just explore a little bit then the relationship between quantum computing and machine learning and artificial intelligence? Most people believe that machine learning has uh, made great progress over the, fair, over the last uh, 10 years, and this is true, but the reality is this progress is not because of mathematical advances. It's not that these algorithms are truly new. Some of them date back as far as the 1970s. What is new today is that there are supercomputers able to exploit and deliver on the promise of those algorithms. And that's where quantum computers have the ability to uh, exponentially increase the amount of calculations that these algorithms can do. And in fact, to the point that machine learning could actually become the primary application of quantum computers. Quantum mm -hmm. computers will be very beneficial uh, to humanity over the next two, three decades, or perhaps even earlier, and the reason in, in many different areas and applications, and the, and the reason will be because these will be the brains on which these machine learning software will be installed. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's going to really transform the world of finance? Yes. Um, look, quantum computing is, is going to happen. Um, the math is solid. The physics is solid. Right now, it's an engineering problem. We have to figure out ways that these quantum computers can achieve um, better performance and better solutions uh, without being um, impacted by noise, by, by engineering problems. Uh, once these engineering problems are resolved, there is, from a theoretical perspective, no reason why these quantum computers will not greatly exceed the computing capacity of the traditional digital computers. And also the same for machine learning and, a and AI, then. That will also transform the, f the financial tools we use? Absolutely. It's already transforming for two reasons, right? For the past five years, um, many hedge funds and asset managers in general have been squeezed in terms of fees, right? <laughs> Uh, the 2 and 20 model uh, where a hedge fund would charge 2% in management fee, 20% in performance fee, has now been replaced by 1 and 10 and is going down into essentially zero. Um, so the only way uh, hedge funds and um, asset managers will survive is, is if they are able to automate. And machine learning allows them to automate and still be economically viable financial operations. So that's one way in which machine learning is definitely already transforming finance. Um, the second reason is because not only machine learning makes finance economically viable, 
these firms can survive the squeeze in the fees, but in fact, they can deliver performance that until now uh, was untapped. And uh, this is not a guess or is not a, an aspirational goal. In fact, some of the best performing hedge funds in the world use machine learning, and that's the reason why they are so successful. Marcos Lopez de Prado, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.